This is a textbook choo-choo train. Apparently this place is super haunted. You just gonna invite demons into your life like that? We are going on a field trip. After leaving our new friends in Nebraska, we head west to a place famous for being the world's largest rectangle. Rectangle enthusiasts from all over the globe come to Colorado to experience 360 degrees of rectangular living. Today we are heading to historic Georgetown, but first to get there we have to drive through the mountains. Good news, the mountain roads are totally chill. No cliffs, no drop-offs, no tight turns, and oh my gosh, you guys, I'm lying. The roads are so scary. I was clenching onto that steering wheel like my life depended on it. I don't want to be here anymore. Well, good news is the faster you drive, the faster you get to the bottom. Hey, thank you, Jesus. We survived and made it to Georgetown just in time because we've got a date with a train. The Georgetown Loop Railroad is the choo-choo ES train I have ever experienced. This is a textbook choo-choo train. Speaking of textbooks, the history of the train is actually very interesting. You will not learn any of it while you're there. There is narration as you go, but I think they're using the tin can and string audio system. So you'll learn about as much as you would if you were listening to somebody dump a box of trombones down a long staircase. Okay, well, what is its history? Why is there this 19th century train scooting and tooting its way across the Rocky Mountains? The route itself dates all the way back to 1884. So old! The context for all this in Colorado is the gold rush, the silver boom. It's all happening, you guys. Rocks are very cool. It was built by the Georgetown Breckenridge and Leadville Railway. I know what you're thinking. Georgetown Breckenridge Leadville Railway. I bet that's a railway that that goes from Georgetown to Breckenridge and Leadville. Well, that was the plan. Boy, oh boy, they tried their very best. They built the loop from Georgetown to Silver Plume and they extended it to Greymont, and then they ran out of money. 19th century banks be like. <laughs> But hey, they made some progress, right? Well, okay, yeah, that's like pretty bad. But sometimes success isn't about having success. It's about the journey and about making friends along the way. Okay, they biffed it big time. They did bad. They only made it 10% of the way. But that 10% they did do, the Georgetown Loop, they did that pretty good. Let's celebrate that. There's a couple things to note here. First of all, the scenery is just gorgeous. It's been bringing tourists up into the mountains to ride this train for almost 140 years. The other thing to note is the route is kind of crazy. All of the squiggly screws and loop-de-loops make for a relaxing journey winding through the landscape. But from above, it looks like it was designed by a toddler drunk on pixie sticks and Capri Sun. The route was planned the way it is because this particular passageway is especially steep. From station to station it has to climb 600 feet. They figured, okay, rise over run. The best way to decrease the slope is to stretch out the track. And they did that with all those loops and wide curves. No train wants to climb up a steep hill. You know, the little engine that could shouldn't have had to. If the town had employed better civil engineers, they wouldn't have even had that problem. I don't see that book as an inspiring story. I see it as a damning expose piece. The village of Storytown is a failed state. All right, that's a little bit of the train history and why the route is planned the way it is. Besides the beautiful scenery, what else is going on? When you get up to the Silver Plume Station, you can get off and there's this neat little rail car museum that shows different styles of train cars, everything from cargo to a mail train. This one features a lovely mannequin that I can only assume was stolen from a Coles. And then this one, sort of like a open concept BYOC. Bring your own chair. That's pretty much it. I guess it's less of a museum and more of like a room. We took one final look at the train yard and got back on the train to Georgetown. You get to pass over one final time the coolest, most iconic part of the whole track, the Devil's Gate Bridge. My only question is, why are we building gates for the devil? You just gonna invite demons into your life like that? I'm just trying to enjoy my wonderful Saturday afternoon. You telling me I'm on a train to hell? Devil's Gate Bridge? Not on this Christian mountain. I claim this bridge for Christ. Be gone, thought. 
It's very cool, just don't look down. You may notice an absurd amount of bikes in a lot of this footage. We just so happen to be there the day of the triple bypass, which is this crazy biking marathon where you bike over 117 miles and climb 10,791 feet. Couldn't be me. Could not be me. The day was pretty much done, but I did want to take a quick little peek at old historic Georgetown. So old. The word I would use to describe this place is quaint. The main thing to do here is the shop, lots of cool little spots with all sorts of trinkets and tchotchkes. Just keep an eye out for peeping toms. This town is crawling with creepers. Can I help you, sir? It's really cool to see all of the old Victorian style architecture mixed with more classic Western styles. You know, these, these Coloradans, they love the rectangles. The architect was like, what style would you like your home in? I want box, square roof, flat front, big box. It is a beautiful town. The one extra thing I wish I had stuck around and done was tour the Hotel de Paris. It's this 19th century French inn that has been meticulously preserved and restored and it's now this crazy museum with over 7,000 historical artifacts. A really cool plug, you can actually go tour this place on their website. It's all captured in 3D. You can look around the dining room, the study, the murder basement. It's a shame that they shut down the kitchen because I mean, where else are you gonna find such delicacies as pig's feet, sheep's feet, brains, and don't forget to drizzle your meat with Robert sauce. No wonder this place is haunted. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Apparently this place is super haunted. We played back the recording. Love it, you are disgusting, I'm gonna kill you. Shut the hell up, bitch. Sometimes that's all you get. <laughs> all right, let's wrap this video up with a beautiful bow. With all my experience and research, my perfect itinerary for a day in Georgetown would be morning train ride, lunch and shopping in the afternoon, and finish your day off with a tour of Hotel de Paris. All right, you guys, I am hitting the road again, which is absolutely terrifying, but there's just so much to see in the Rockies. Tomorrow, we're hitting the Manitou Cliff Dwellings, so like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Goodbye. Helicopter, helicopter.